Welcome to Jump Alex and Anders TV, and I've got the man himself, Paul, from Zildjian, so we're going to explain the Zildjian K sound, because it's a question we get asked a lot, and there's lots of variants in mm -hmm. not just size, but obviously in different families of K, basically. So we're going to take a few. We're going to start off in the shop, so we're actually going to take some symbols off the wall, try and explain a few different things, um, just so you can see and, and see why Paul p puts different characteristics in different Ks for musical application. Yes. So yeah. we're, we're going to pop into the store and uh, check it out, yeah. Right, we're going to pick some symbols to yep. show people what is... K. K, because there's so many different Ks on the wall. So let's pick a few so you can describe different hammer marks or different styles. Yeah. So start with this one. Yeah, we'll take that one. So this, this is one, a... This one's very unique, different uh, new one last year. Yeah, K custom is... special drive. So these are super, super thin and the bottom is lathed and the top just has kind of like a scratch on it and it has the uh, the oxide layer still there. It's also you can really see the hammer marks. Yep, yep, so it's hammered like a K, and then we go back and we put these big round hammer marks in, and then we put uh, clusters in there. Like I said earlier, I steal yep. from myself. So, and that gets it to that real kind of uh, aggressive, raw, kind of dark, funky K sound that opens up and, sh and, and shuts down immediately, almost like a sneeze, right? So, and do you want me to play it? Yeah, go on. Okay, so then if we go to like, let's say just this K custom here, and this is this is a, a more of a traditional type of K. Uh, the K customs are over hammered, but you know this is this is a general purpose kind of dark sounding symbol. And then if we go to the K Constantinople, <clears throat> then the way that these were hammered, um, uh, 18 inch K Constantinople crash and the way that this was hammered is really reminiscent of how the symbols were made like way over a hundred years ago and we we borrowed from the k constantinople orchestral symbols to to bring it into some um drum set symbols and these are lovely yeah so if you do me a favor one question before you yep. flip that over yep. absolutely question we get a lot what does that say? Uh, the, I know it doesn't say Constantinople, does it? It well, says Karope. Yeah. No, no, no. That's Armin Zildjian's signature. Ah, so that, is that that's, bit... that that's that's when um, instead of signing in the bells like they did years ago, because you used to put the weights <clears> and the <throat> sign there, didn't you? Well, no. The hit on all the K Constantinopoles, we always laser engraved Armin Zildjian's name, and that's like a way of saying he approved the K Constantinople process. Yeah. So this is even. Even now, we've yep. back yep. a couple hundred years. So. Yeah, so he, he, when we were going through this design process for orchestral symbols, he says, I want really big, deep hammer marks like they were uh, back then. Because as time went on, you, you could see uh, 40s, 50s, 60s Ks where the, the hammer mark was a little bit smaller. And we know those symbols to be like what um, Elvin Jones and Tony Williams was playing. But he wanted to like go back even further to like yeah, orchestral yeah. time. So we, we just kept the manufacturing process and lent it into some drum set symbols. So if we put, let's do this. Put yeah. that on your finger. Okay. Can you use put that one, yep. As a tree stand. Okay. So we'll we'll go we'll go through, you know, here here's kind of just a dark kind of very pretty but it's dark if we if we compared it to an A. So you can hear more complexity because of the way that it's hammered, because these all have the same bell. And now the K-Custom Special Drive, this is going to be like because of, of what we did and didn't do to it. So within the K family of sounds, you can choose these. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and they're all Ks, and it's how we manipulate the metal that gets us into what's a Constantinople, what's a K-Custom um, Dark, and what's a K-Custom Special Dry. Yeah, and then, I mean, we could then we could talk about Karopes. Yeah, we'll talk Where the Karopes, let's, let's grab one of those off the shelf. I'll just grab a, a ride symbol here. One quick question, because sure. you probably know the weights a lot more. This one's 3048. Yep. We get two people come in and go, oh, have you got anything a bit heavier? Where would that, this is an 18? Yeah. So where would that sit? Oh, boy, see, we we put the gram weights on because the customers want it, but we live in pounds ounces, ah. and so this symbol should weigh somewhere between two pounds twelve ounces and three pounds. So that's, wow, that's yeah, quite a variant yeah, then. Yeah. So um, you know, 
for every ounce of metal, it's 25.36 grams. Okay. So if they came in and said, I want to have a 1350, they're not going to hear it between 48 That's and 50. That's it, it's, it's It's too small. Okay. You know? We've got another so. Constance over here. This, yep. This is a bigger size. Yep, 22, yep. But this is 25.54. Yep. So, as of right, that's pretty light, isn't it? It, it is, it is. Very so nice. the medium thin low, this, this is probably living somewhere in the neighborhood of, of about, you know, uh, five and a quarter to five and a half pounds. It isn't that bad because it isn't breaking my finger. So that's how <laughs> I know it's not too bad. And that's the most popular K Constantinople we sell. That one right there. Medium, medium, medium thin, thin low. 22. Yep. Oh, okay, cool. Yep. yep. Right, back to... So Corope, right? So people say, well, what is Corope? And it was just kind of like a sound quality that um, um, was missing. So we kind of borrowed from K Constantinople, old Ks, modern Ks, and we wanted to get to a quality of sound. And, and the patina finish, like I was saying earlier, earlier it, it, it's part of the sound. So it's not, it's not a finish because we wanted it just to look old, like you found it in, in, in the basement or in a, in a pawn shop or something. Um, but one of the things that's really characteristic of the Corope is that the bells start off very shallow when we put the bell in. I mean, it's almost like you can't even see it. And then what we do is we have, we have a hammer, and we run the cymbals under the hammer by hand, and we reshape every Corope bell. So every single one is different. And I know because there's me and a guy that works for, for me in my department, we're the only ones that do it. So we get it to a certain shape and that's it. And we put it on the cart, we do the next one. So it, it's nearly impossible to make them all the same. So this bell was done by either you or one other person? Yes, yep. Wow. And, what, and one of the things, like if you have a, um, like a, a bell here on this K Custom dry ride, so that, that's separate to the sound, even though you can hear the body in it. The bell here is, is supposed to be integrated into the, into the overall sound. So we want to activate the entire piece of metal. So we don't, we, on the Corops, we don't want a chimey bell. We almost don't want a bell at all. And that's where we get into that Corops sound. So every single bell is different in the Corops series across all, all the diameters. Do you also want to explain the word Corot? Where is yeah, that so, from? Yeah, so where K comes from is his, his, the, the formal pronunciation of his name is Kerapi. So when Kerapi Zildjian took over making uh, symbols in Turkey, he changed the trademark to K period Zildjian, and that's where K came from. So um, this, this is a block letter K that the company used um, in the 70s. So we, we decided to to you know, kind of bring that out again because it, it speaks to a certain demographic of customer that remembers that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so at, at the time, you know, K, K is, is a sound, but it was a byproduct of uh, manufacturing process. So the only reason we have A's and K's is because Avidus III, when he started making symbols in the U.S., he, he went to making symbols and starting to put rows in rather than putting hammer marks everywhere. And what happened was you got a, a cleaner sound, um, uh, you know, a more kind of lined up pretty sound, and then you, you had uh, Ks that were still being made, and that had a darker, funkier sound because of that manufacturing process. So the drummers started calling them A's and Ks, not the company. Yeah. That's, that's the switch on the wall now. Even, right. even now, the divide for us on the wall is there, yep. literally. Yeah, so if you, if you, you know... Nice and bright, and then and then we play this one. So it's dark. And the great thing is that you have all kinds of sound colors. So whatever speaks to you, that's what you choose. And 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 mix and match. We always tell people you want sound colors. You don't want to pick all the same uh, uh, crash cymbal sounds. You know, you want to, you want to have highs and lows, and you want a china, you want a splash. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I quite often, when I played with my Zildjian set, I'd actually have an A custom and a K dark, mm -hmm. but the same size, two seventeen. Yes, yeah. but yep. they're just contrasting symbols. Exactly. But I like the feel of a seventeen, but they're so different. It, right. It's it's nonverbal communication with with drumming, and that's how we express ourselves. So you know, 
we wouldn't talk like this all the time to each other because then it would be boring. It's the same with symbols. You you want to you want to have different sound colors, you know, during the the course of a song to you know accentuate it. Yeah. So that's kind of, you know, we have a lot of different K's, but they don't all sound the same. But they live within that kind of dark, funky, low, lower pitched uh, sound spectrum. So how many different K's are there? Because we do get customers coming and go, oh, I want a K. But even for us, there's loads on the walls. Right. So how well, you, ha you have the traditional K, yeah. and we tend not to mess with that too much because we want to make sure that that's kind of the, that pure dark sound. Then we did the K Custom Dark series, and that was the first symbol that was thin and then over hammered, and that kind of dried out the sound. So Those came out around 1992. These that's ones? That's this, yep. Yeah. And then, the, uh, like I said a minute ago, the K Constantinopoles, they're a derivative or, of orchestral symbols. That one? Yep, so that's why th these hammer marks look like this, because that's the 100 plus year old uh, hand symbols would have had really big, deep hammer marks. Um, and then getting into the K Custom Special Dry, that's a sound characteristic in how we manipul manipulate the metal. Um, but you've also got hybrids, right. customs, yep. darks, yep. probably a dark somewhere. Well, the custom series, if you look at it, that's kind of where we can put in kind of new K ideas. Okay, and then like we're the sweets, which this one here. So this is when we're talking about the bell. Oh yeah, the different colors. But this is really a traditional just kind of K, and we added to it. Okay. And to not not have this uh, favor the mids to lows and keep the highs in there, that's why the bell is like that. We leave the mass there. So even though it's a low pitch symbol, you, you have the highs and mids and lows speak all at the same time, rather than if I was to lathe this, because I did, I made some with a lathe bell, it was kind of... It was more on the, the darker side. Yeah, this so, has got a nice shimmer. Yep, so you leave the mass in there. But like I was saying about the K Custom Series, that's when we try new things, like we went back and redesigned the K Custom Special Drives, and those are kind of on the really kind of extreme end. Yep. It's safe to put it in that because the drummers understand what K Custom is. And it's not K, and it's not K Constantinople. So that's where you find the hybrids. You find the overhammered stuff. You find the, the Special Drives. That that's where they go. Cool. Yeah. yeah. It's good to clarify because we've got a lot of a lot of people do. Oh, I want a, I want a K, and they don't realise how many different ones there are. Right. And obviously, take a hybrid. Mm -hmm. How the lathing and the polishing and the big bell makes such a difference. I mean, yeah, it's a 19, so it's a wee bit bigger. So it's a thin symbol, but because all this mass is here, so the the, the weight of this, I mean, is like a thin crash. Yeah. But because of the mass there. Um, you know, you can play it light and get a pretty sound, but you can also put a little bit more energy into it and it's like it has another gear. And the bell on the right of these yeah. is really funky, really nice. Can I share the story of the, yeah, where yeah. the hybrids came from? So, um, at a NAMM show, this was in 2003, uh, Akira Jimbo was there. Yep. And he was playing the 20 inch K Custom Ride. And just, just like all the other artists, you know, they're always looking for something a little bit more than what they have right now. So he says, I really like the stick definition, and I love the bell sound, but when I crash the regular K custom ride, it's a little too, you know, krang sound. So could you lathe half of it so when I crash it, I get a kind of a prettier crash sound? So I said, sure. Came back from, from the NAMM show and pulled four K custom rides off the shelf and lay the bottom, lay the top, sent them to Akira. And he, and he said, this is ex exactly what I wanted, and, and it exploded. So our distributor in Japan, Yamaha Japan, called us and said, what did you make for Jimbo? We're getting all kinds of phone calls. So then we decided to kind of test market it in Japan, and we made a couple hundred. Yeah, we, I made a couple hundred, <laughs> and we shipped them over to Japan, and they sold within like three weeks. So we're like, ooh, we have something here. And at the time, we were doing these Mission from GAD tours in the United States. So for each stop along the tour, we had two K custom, K custom hybrid rides. It wasn't even called that yet. We didn't know what we were going to call it. And, and they sold immediately at each stop. So we're like, oh, we have something here. So we came back, spoke to Akira Jimbo and said, what are the other size symbols do you play? We would like to apply this to that. And he was all on board for that. So it came out of a, a need for a ride symbol to crash a little bit better, but not lose the stick or not lose the bell of a K custom ride. And what about the hi-hats? Obviously the hi-hats are a weird size. 
Is so, that also a key, right? He, yeah, we, we went through 13 and a third and 13 <laughs> and 5 eighths, and I said, how about we just do a quarter, because it will be easier to read the tape measure when we go to trim off the, the metal we don't need to, to make it. So he said, okay. And originally the splashes were um, eights and tens. And he says, how about, how about a 9 and 11? An 11, yep. yeah. And, and this is a rare, rare symbol development project where he was not with me when, when I was making the prototypes. I would make them, send them to Japan, he would either call or we would exchange emails. And um, it's, it's one of the rare times where, where the drummer doesn't come into the drummer's lounge and we work for a day. And it was very, very successful. I play two of these on my drum set. I've got a ride actually. Yeah. So. Um, how, how long did that process, obviously a lot of emailing and a lot of, how long did it take to come up with the hybrid theory? Because you can do a whole box set now. So. Right. Well, the, the ride symbol was done almost immediately. It was, it was the crashes and the hats and the chinas and stuff. It went back and forth, it probably about a year. Yeah, so from one now yep. to the next. Yep. A, a normal symbol development cycle from having an idea to when the um, consumers see it is, is two years. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yep. You also got the... Like yeah, K that's, logo. yeah the, that vented K, I mean, I, I love that logo. It's, it, you know. But to people that have been playing Zildjian a lot, they recognise the old right, K. Right, right. So these are some of the selection ones that we've got for this evening's event. Yes. But you've picked these, these three first, because this one was the one we were talking about earlier, isn't it? So this is yeah. the, the, the this, wolf one, as you call it. Yeah, this is the combination of 22-inch K Constantinople Bounce and 22-inch K-thin overhammered, K-Constantinople thin overhammered. And he wanted to combine <clears throat> the traits of both of them uh, together. So with the K-Constantinople thin overhammered, it actually has a smaller bell and is really super thin, okay? And that symbol is overhammered, so you don't lose the stick. It doesn't wash out at certain, you know, up-tempo playing. But he wanted the dirtiness of the K-Constantinople bounce with all the clusters in it, so he said, can you put them together? So this is not as thin as the K Constantinople thin over hammered, but it's in the neighborhood to really give it uh, what he was looking for. And I, I think it sounds really, really fantastic. It's got a nice, nice stick, and it's and it's uh, it's dirty and it's funky and it's it's growly, but it hangs in there while you're playing it. This cushion of oh, underneath, but you have ding, 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 ding on top. It's really beautiful. You can also see the flex, so you know it's yeah one of the thins. Because obviously, yeah, it's it's it's. I mean, it's thin, but it's not it's not as thin as the as the uh, thin over hammered because we didn't want to lose the qualities of the bounce too. So that's how we put that together. And we also have a twenty inch and a twenty one inch version as well. But that's th this is the one that he asked for. Yeah, and there's there's a, a lot of people besides him that. Uh, is playing it. And so there's one of the little clusters, so yep. that's like one of the hammer marks where they're all together. And then we see the big hammer marks with all of these big right. ones here. Yep. So. And then you have the K Constantinople hammering underneath, you know, and then we lay it. So this this went through, I don't know, one, two, three, four, like we hammered this six times to get to this sound. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. so that's what's going on with that. Let's move over to this one because this is a, another artist one. This is the one, uh, Russ Miller and I had been working on. The, this is the 21 inch staccato ride and as you can see uh, the bell uh, is brilliant finish and you can see on the edge that it's shiny too and so this went through that K dark thin process hammered like a K custom uh, got polished um, smoothed the edge and originally there was no lathing but what Russ needed he wanted a little crash sound out of it and open up so we, we rough scratch the top and bottom so you get a little bit more out of it and really the way that we're describing this it's a flat ride that you can crash because most flat rides when you crash them they don't give you a crash sound um, but the thing that Russ really loves about it is that the stick comes right back after you crash it you don't ever lose it so sometimes that that's a uh, trade-off on other symbols right so it sounds like this Great bell. I mean, that's that's the bell that we use in small crash cymbals and hi hats, stuff like that. So again, uh, this is a 21, and we also made a 20 and a 22 to get some feedback, and we want to see if other people like it as well. 
Talk, talking about bells, obviously, <clears throat> each bell profile as well as size and shape are all massively different. Mm-hmm. You are explaining just to make a new bell costs ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. So it's not just having a new shape machine. There's a whole system. There's a die set that it goes in, and and it's quite the investment on Zildjian's part to try out a new bell concept. So um, and and we have we have the. Um, freedom in my department to go and, and spend that money to try things. Um, the Ultra Hammer China, I don't know if you s- sell those, but that's that's the first cup that goes up and back in on itself. And we didn't, we had no idea what it was going to do, what it was going to sound like, if we were ever going to make a symbol with it. And we tried it in crash symbols and, and different things like that. And they said, you know what, Let, let's put it in a China because it's not that traditional bell sound. So let's see if we get, you know, a really kind of crazy, more authentic Chinese sound if we put that in there because it's not traditional bell shape and it worked out perfect. So, yeah. It's an investment, but it's also a risk. So just... Yeah, sometimes it's a risk, but you you have to take those risks to see where something's going to go. Yeah. And then even with you, you were saying, oh, I take the bell size from that symbol, but put it on a bigger symbol just to experiment. So it's cool. So uh, to wrap this one, then this one has... This that, is this that's is, our this large is a monster. Cup. <laughs> so that that that's a really large bell, and this is a 24-inch Crash of Doom, and the 20-inch Crash of Doom came out 20 years ago, and it was based off of some symbols that Dennis Chambers had gotten in China. He bought a whole stack of them, like 30 of them. He was playing with Santana, and he broke 29, and he had one left, and he and he brought it to Zildjian and said, "Can you make can you make this sound, um, but with your alloy, which would be a little bit more durable?" So. As you can see, the, the Crash of Doom, it's, it, it's, it's heavily hammered, but it's not really kind of have a, a traditional curvature like a normal symbol. It's all wavy and it's kind of yeah, funky. I mean, and, that's, that's, and that's where that we get that. there is all... Yeah, it's, all, it's almost wrong, but it's right at the same time. So it's a big beast. Um, the 20 inch has a smaller bell in it because of the diameter. And when we got to this, we put a much larger one in because we wanted a bigger wall of sound. That's a beast of a symbol. Yeah, it's a beast of a symbol. So you can, you can, it, you know, that's going to ring for a long time. Whereas that has a small bell, and and it's just gonna, it's gonna trail off. But that one's still going. Yeah. <laughs> so those, those are um, some really fun uh, prototypes that we're we're getting feedback on. Yeah. Right now, and then I have some some uh, newer crash symbols. Yeah. So kind of like what we did in the other room with. So With the K's, I want to show these ones, and we'll put these up. I can't yeah. imagine how heavy the blank was for that. Oh, it's, it's it was a heavy casting too. So we have a 19-inch K Custom Fast Crash, and we made 19s and 20s, and these are symbols that Aaron Spears and Gerald Hayward have been um, playing, and the K Custom Fast Crashes stop at 18. And as we saw, symbols getting bigger and thinner. That's the fashion. It, that's the fashion. So um, we're thinking about putting these in the catalog. Okay. And then we've gotten a lot of feedback from different dealers like yourself and distributors saying, you know, there's more room in the in the K Constantinople series uh, for some crashes. Yeah. Bigger odd, crashes. Odd sizes as well. People yeah. really. It's sort of been traditional 14, 16, 18, but a lot of people really are playing a 19 or. Right. A bit like the sweet ride, people using the 21 sweet 21 ride. ride. So it's the odd size is also in fashion. So, so this is a 19, and then we have a 19 inch cake uh, custom special dry. And I'm, I'm giving it the name Projection Crash because it's just a little bit heavier than uh, the stuff that's in the catalog now. now okay. And because this has been on fire for us since we did the, the redesign, um, we wanted to see if, if we gave it just a little bit more meat, we could keep the, the sound of the special dry, but give some of the players a little bit more sustain. You know, if, they're, if, they're, if they want to use a sound color in a louder situation. That okay. way they're not overplaying. The, the, those other ones are like paper thin. Yeah. And they go, Psh! so this one will hang out uh, a little bit longer. But I just want to, like we did in the other room, I just want to kind of um, demonstrate uh, different types of case. Yeah, right. So, so this, this again, K Custom, um, Fast Crash, hammered like a K, lathe to a uh, Fast Crash weight, gets over hammered again, and then brilliant finish. So it's going to give us a, you know, kind of darker, prettier sound quality. Yeah. 
So K Constantinople again has that kind of bigger, deeper hammer marks like those orchestral symbols had uh, a couple hundred years ago. And this is going to get a little bit more complex than that dark arena. These all have the same bell shape too, so that's why I put them up. Yeah. And then special dry, and this should get just go like I said earlier. So it lingers, you see how it lingers a little bit, little bit longer than that 18 that we played in the other room? All K's, all individual, whatever will suit your needs. Yeah, and obviously different brightness and tones. So right. that's, that's yep. the, the K sound is obviously is, com is so vast, so right. it's good to sort of explain it a little bit. Yeah, so. So that's what we have going on with some new prototype ideas. Check it out, yeah. So I hope we've explained a few things about the K sound and why you want to pick that particular symbol for that particular purpose. So uh, pleasure to have you, absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. And yeah, any questions, we, peel them, stick them in the comments. We'll, we'll try and get them to Paul and try and answer them ourselves. But uh, yeah. this is Drum Addicts on Anderson's TV and we'll see you next time. Yes. One take wonder. I didn't used to be, I've done uh -huh. a few of them now. I know. I, at Nam when I